My name is Elizabeth Anderson, and it's a great privilege for me to welcome you here to this closing ceremony and the solemn signing of our uh, ninth Chautauqua Declaration. Uh, I am the director of the ABA, the American Bar Association Rule of Law Initiative, a project of the ABA that works in over 50 countries to advance the rule of law, working with our justice sector colleagues throughout the world to strengthen legal systems, laws, um, to deliver on um, accountability at the national level. I'm here on behalf of all of the ABA entities that join together in sponsoring these dialogues, including the ABA Center for Human Rights and its International Criminal Court Project. Our colleagues are just now uh, helping with a study tour of US Congress people who are visiting The Hague and learning about these tribunals. So that's very important work, we know. And also the ABA Section of International Law, the professional uh, entity within the ABA for international lawyers, those who practice this craft. We, as uh, the international facing entities of the ABA, are pleased to be co-sponsors of this dialogue. dialogue. As always, it's been a very rich couple of days. I feel a little bit like I have historical whiplash um, <laughs> after these discussions, thinking about Nuremberg and the post-war German period, thinking about 20 years ago in Srebrenica, thinking about uh, atrocities in Guatemala and contemporary efforts at accountability there, thinking about current challenges facing these ad hoc tribunals. It's some part expert reading, some part therapy, some <laughs> part public educational conference, uh, some part reunion, and always a very special gathering of this group of committed individuals working on accountability for the most horrendous crimes. I'm very pleased to moderate this signing ceremony of the international prosecutors gathered here. Let me introduce them from uh, your left to right. Um, we have closest to me uh, Serge Bromertz, who is with the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Next to him, David Crane, the first prosecutor for the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Next to David, Richard Goldstone, former prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda. Next, Brenda Hollis, prosecutor for the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Hassan Jallo, International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Nicholas Kumjian, Extra Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia. And finally, James Stewart, uh, standing in uh, for Fatu Benzuda of the International Criminal Court. We were reminded at our opening about the evil in our midst, the evil that was 70 years ago, the evil that was 20 years ago, the evil that is today in the form of ISIS and the, what David Crane aptly characterized as kaleidoscopic conflicts. These dialogues underscore the challenges that these prosecutors face in their work, resource constraints, lack of cooperation, capacity issues, difficult procedural, substantive, and moral questions, and gaps in national capacity to deliver on justice and, and will to follow through. But lest we despair, we also, in these dialogues, remember the progress that has been made. We remember that transitional justice takes time. We were reminded last night that even in Germany, 20 years after Nuremberg, there was still very little reconciliation or, or reckoning with uh, the past, and that 1965 was a pivot point in that process. And importantly, we have been reminded again and again in the last couple of days that time is on our side. Finally, I take the most hope from this collection of individuals. To their, uh, from their commitment to accountability, their steadfast and tireless work in service of that mission, and to the commitment that they bring to that work. The annual declaration, the Chautauqua Declaration, issued by these prosecutors 
is a tangible representation of that commitment. And let me read it to you. In their words, this ninth Chautauqua Declaration, issued September 1st, 2015, quote, in the spirit of humanity and peace, the assembled current and former international prosecutors and their representatives here at the Chautauqua Institution, recognizing the continuing need for justice and the rule of law as the foundation to international peace and security, and cognizant of the legacy of all those who preceded us at Nuremberg and elsewhere, commemorate the late Sergei Magnitsky as the seventh recipient of the Joshua Hines Award for humanitarian achievement, for his important and impressive service to humanity. Note the 70th anniversary of the opening of the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. Note the imminent completion of the judicial mandate of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and commend its contribution to the development of international criminal law, and to promoting peace, reconciliation, and accountability for crimes in Rwanda. Note the concerns expressed in past declarations remain to be addressed, namely, the failures of states and international organizations to fulfill their obligations, the upsurge in violence against civilians, the general lack of accountability for these crimes, and failures to enforce international humanitarian law. The continued prevalence of sexual and gender-based violence and crimes against children and the lack of accountability for many of these crimes. On occasion of the 20th anniversary of the genocide at Srebrenica, deplore the targeting of groups based on ethnicity, nationality, race, <clears throat> and religion. Condemn the increased destruction by armed groups of cultural and religious objects which are the common heritage of humanity, and emphasizing the need for accountability for these serious international crimes. Recognize the importance of the residual mechanisms to carry out the continuing legal obligations of the international tribunals and courts as they close or approach closure. Remind the states of their obligation to ensure the effective functioning of the international judicial institutions they have created. And now do solemnly declare and call upon all members of the international community to keep the spirit of the Nuremberg Principles alive by ensuring universal accountability and equal application of international criminal law to all, ending impunity for the gravest crimes by refusing to countenance amnesty or immunity, ensuring accountability for all crimes, especially sexual and gender-based violence and crimes against children, ensuring that domestic institutions have the necessary legal framework, capacity, and will to discharge their primary responsibility to investigate and prosecute international crimes. Discharging their international and treaty obligations to cooperate with the international criminal courts, tribunals, and residual mechanisms, and in particular to locate, arrest, and to surrender all fugitives accused of international crimes. Providing sufficient resources for all international courts, tribunals, and residual mechanisms to achieve their respective mandates including the ability to meet their obligation to protect and support witnesses and those made vulnerable by their cooperation and to ensure justice is done and seen to be done. Signed in mutual witness, James K. Stewart for Fatu Ben Suda, International Criminal Court. Serge Bramertz, International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. David M. Crane, Special Court for Sierra Leone. David Kinnicom for Norman Farrell, the Special Tribunal for Lebanon. And I should mention that David signed the declaration just before he had to leave earlier today for a flight. Richard Goldstone, International Criminal Tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda. Brenda Hollis, Special Court for Sierra Leone. 
Hassan B. Jalo International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and Nicholas Kumjian, Extraordinary Chambers and the Courts of Cambodia. I will now pass the declaration for each of the prosecutors to affix their signature. Please join me in thanking the prosecutors for this declaration, this call to arms, and for their day-in, day-out efforts at accountability, a service to all of humanity. And with that, I declare these Ninth International Humanitarian Law Dialogues closed. We will see you next year in Nuremberg.